Hello, I'm Kim Nohava, principal of Zach Elementary in Fort Collins. Zach Elementary opened in the fall of 2002. It's a neighborhood school in the southeast part of Fort Collins. Today we're going to be talking about our namesakes, and that is Robert and Grace Zach. First of all, I want to introduce um, the individuals that are here to help me. And first of all, I have Haley Osborne. She's a fifth grade student at Zach Elementary. Welcome, Haley. Hi. And we have Grace Zach, who is one of our namesakes. Robert um, passed away and is no longer with us, so we're going to rely on Grace to give us a lot of information about both Robert um, and herself. I'm going to start the interview questions today with um, asking Grace to tell us a little bit of information about um, her and Robert's um, history as far as teaching in Poudre School District. Well, Robert never used that name except for signing official papers. He was Bob Zach mm -hmm. to all of his colleagues and uh, often with things that he wrote to, he would just sign Bob Zach. Bob and I both came to Fort Collins in the fall of 1950 and uh, I, t I was hired as the speech and debate teacher mm -hmm. along with American literature and I thoroughly enjoyed the idea of uh, training and helping those uh, debaters, taking them to the speech meets. Uh, that uh, didn't fit very well with uh, the career changes of being a parent as well and so I only did that for a few years. Uh, Bob was hired as the senior English teacher and then was given the assignment of uh, a sponsor for the Spilding newspaper, and he loved newspaper writing. So that was a forte. A still bigger forte came uh, uh, as he developed a curriculum to uh, teach creative writing that had not been a part of the curriculum at all, and so he initiated creative writing classes in the district and loved both the journalism and the creative writing, and students loved that too. Uh, both Bob and I were uh, chairs of uh, our departments after Poudre High School opened. I was chair of, uh, at Poudre High School and he was chair at uh, Fort Collins High School for a number of years. The thing that I think maybe speaks most to our mutual commitment was our interest in building curriculum and thinking about the depth of course content and initiating new classes and that was a wonderful opportunity. And times were changing really rapidly. So things like uh, uh, Bob's bringing paperback, sets of paperback books to the classroom so that the English teachers could have an extra library was a novelty, but now it's commonplace. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to think about some of those things that were first initiated. Uh, when he um, went to the administration building as a resource teacher, that gave him a great deal more freedom to uh, see the schools in a larger perspective and he would visit K-12. He also became involved with um, uh, the John Hay Fellows Program for the Humanities and <clears throat> that was a big leap forward in the curriculum at uh, uh, Poudre School District. We were able to start a team teaching of the senior humanities in the high schools and it flourished as programs. So, you know, those are special memories. Uh, I began to teach the senior humanities toward the latter part of my career, but I team taught with Bob Bacon for mm. about 12 years before I retired. I think that Bob initiated things like um, the mentors program for writers in the community to work with youngsters in the schools from about the sixth through the 12th grade as a, a program funded by the Colorado State Department. And when funding for that slipped away, mm -hmm. um, then uh, that program uh, was not marketed to other schools as it could have been. And that, that was a disappointment. But there were so many pleasures that outweigh the disappointments that I have a really fond memory of the two of us as career educators. Okay, Haley? Um, how did you feel when you learned that you and Robert were selected to have a name, a uh, school named after you? I was amazed, and I'm still <laughs> amazed. <laughs> There's no other word for it. And even uh, when I go out now to the building and look up and see Zach Elementary uh, on the side of the building, uh, it's an amazement. Uh, I am 
I was really so proud when the school district initiated the idea that they would name schools for educators. But I had not put myself in that perspective. And I really am sorry that uh, Bob was not here to uh, see that and experience. And I think he was so much more outgoing that it would have been a wonderful dimension to have, too. How does Zach Elementary compare to the schools in which you taught? Well, for one thing, I'm taller than a lot of the students. <laughs> and that didn't happen at the high school level. Um, but I think that the uh, spirit of cooperation among teachers and the atmosphere of learning, uh, I love that. And I think they're very similar and very rewarding. Okay, Grace. Um, we were so pleased when we opened that you started the Zach Elementary Creativity Fund. And um, we'd like to have you share what your, why you started the fund and what your intentions were for the fund and how you hope that it will benefit students today as well as in the future. I had uh, set up a, a fund for a poet laureate awards, mm -hmm. pe people who were teaching mm -hmm. poetry in the uh, grade levels, all of the grade levels at school, uh, as a tribute to Bob. And then with the school, I thought the school uh, deserves to be able to expand uh, with creativity and innovative programs as we enjoyed doing. And sometimes there isn't money for that. Often we went begging for money. And I wanted there to be a fund that would allow extra things. So I was really lucky because the Poudre School District Foundation was just mm -hmm, beginning mm -hmm. right at that time too. And they were so helpful in setting that up and uh, uh, seeing that we could make it work. And then I'm really indebted to the uh, Parent Advisory Board because mm -hmm. they stepped in and helped with fundraising for two years, I think, yep. and brought it up to a level so that it's self-sustaining now. And we'll be able to add uh, funds as people wish, but we'll know that it will last then and money will be available each year to have something special. And if we get more money, more things mm -hmm. special uh, as a part of that. And that's very dear to my heart. As a result of the uh, funds last year, we were able to bring a theater group um, in for our two assemblies for our students. And we expect that that'll be ongoing um, throughout you know, the history of Zach. So mm -hmm. it'll just get bigger and better as time Great. goes on. So um, we have really enjoyed that and appreciated that. Thank you. Um, next, um, I want to talk a little bit about your connection and your involvement at Zach. Um, Grace has been wonderful since we opened about volunteering and being a part of the many events and activities at the school. And I'd like you just to share some of the things that, that you have done over the years at Zach. Okay. The first uh, uh, that I volunteered was to uh, go to the kindergarten classes. And that was an amazing thing mm -hmm. for a secondary mm -hmm. uh, a teacher to experience those kindergartners in the very first weeks of their uh, uh, classes through the year and to see how rapidly they learn and how caring the uh, kindergartner teacher is. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. I did that two years. I remember that. You weren't quite so sure about going into kindergarten, <laughs> but right. you did a great job. I did that two years. Yeah. And then I became acquainted with a spellbinders organization in town. And their goal is to uh, encourage uh, storytellers to be able to keep the legacy of oral storytelling uh, and go into the schools. Mm -hmm. So I joined that group and uh, the curriculum for the first grade with fairy tales and with fables seemed a perfect fit. So uh, I go in once a month to all the sections of uh, first grade and tell stories. And then in addition to that, I love it when there are special assemblies, special programs mm -hmm. that I'm invited to. And uh, uh, I find it really fun to uh, see those youngsters growing so fast. Mm -hmm. And she does even a lot more than what she's sharing with you. She's been a judge at the invention oh, convention right. and yes. all kinds of things. And most of the students, staff, and parents know who she is. And that's, that's wonderful to have that. And mm -hmm. so we really appreciate you taking the time to do that. Thanks. Okay. What do you see as the greatest challenges that face the Zach Elementary teachers and students in the future? Well, I think the rapid growth in that area. Mm -hmm. There's just no doubt about uh, how too many students for the size of a building impacts uh, despite the best efforts of all the people involved. 
And see, I've even experienced that as the storyteller because uh, mm -hmm. uh, first there were three sections of the first mm -hmm. grade, and I could go to each classroom and tell the story. When there were four, it was more difficult to go to each classroom and tell that four times and be sure where you were in the story. And then there were five, and so the teachers combined the classes, and there are three sections in one uh, storytelling time, two in the other, and it works. But it just isn't as intimate as when there was that one class right there mm -hmm. in front of you and you were talking right to them. It, it makes a difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any final thoughts that you would like to share with the Pooter School District community on being a namesake at Zach and being a part of that community? It is a wonderful opportunity. And just volunteering and being a part of the schools is an, uh, not all of us are uh, as fortunate to uh, have the direct connection, but we can make direct connections. And I think that being exposed to the schools lets everyone know that the Poudre School District is a, a tremendous opportunity for students. It's doing a wonderful job. I'm really proud to have been associated with the Poudre School District. And uh, at the Last of my teaching career, I was having, uh, well, early on, I had the students of former, mm -hmm. I mean, the children of former students yeah. in my classes. Then I began to have a few grandchildren in mm -hmm. my classes. And now when I go to Zach Elementary, there are great grandchildren of former wow. students. So it's wonderful to have been a part of the community. And the more one becomes involved in things within the community, the more the depth of that commitment is, I think. Okay. Well, I want to thank both of you for being here today. Haley um, will be graduating this year from Zach. And she's been at Zach since her first grade year. And uh, thank you for helping with the interviews. And um, Grace, um, it's been a joy to work with you and have thank you be you. a part of our Zach Elementary team. So thank you so much for talking to us about being our namesake, along with Robert. Thank you. It was a great pleasure. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate it. And I appreciate very much what you are doing in the schools. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Bill Smith. A little over a year ago, I was given an opportunity that has turned out to be the highlight of my educational career, and that was to uh, be chosen to be the principal at Bacon Elementary School. Not only has that been very challenging and very rewarding and, and just a very fulfilling opportunity for me in my career, but it's also been an honor to be principal at a school that was named after a man who has provided so much service to our community, um, both in the Board of Education here and now in the Colorado Legislature, but was also a great teacher and a great mentor to many people who uh, continue to teach today. So without further ado, we are here today to interview Mr. Bob Bacon. He's with us this morning, and um, I have with me two students from Bacon Elementary School, some of our finest sixth grade students here, Tanner Ulan and Emily Strasser. Um, so we're, we're happy here today to get to know uh, Mr. Bacon a little bit better and uh, find out uh, what makes this man tick. Tell us about yourself and what you are currently doing. Thank you, Emily. Um, currently, I'm a state senator representing the city of Fort Collins. And uh, I previously, I served in the House of Representatives. And uh, I'm privileged to represent the city of Fort Collins in the Colorado Senate. And I think that maybe you in fourth grade came to visit the legislature, so you know the building in which I work in Denver. So. You can imagine me there working in the, the Colorado State Capitol. Where did you grow up and go to school? I grew up in Galesburg, Illinois. And uh, of course, I went through all the schools in, in Galesburg. And uh, then I went on to uh, Illinois State University and uh, taught for a few years in Illinois before I came to Colorado. What made you move to Colorado? Well, uh, as a youngster, my parents took trips to the West. We had relatives scattered throughout the West, and, and we traveled through Colorado and had a distant relative in Colorado or two and had been here several times. But uh, the uh, major uh, cause of my coming to Colorado was that uh, I had a former college roommate who had come to Colorado 
and uh, was teaching in Loveland and he enticed me to come to Colorado and so I came and got a job in Fort Collins, Colorado after I moved from Illinois. As a native of Colorado, I'm very proud to have been born here and, and grown up in this state. What, what are some of the challenges you see facing our state these days? Obviously, we're, we're growing like <coughs> crazy, and, and w we are. what does that mean, and, and, and how do you deal with that down at the legislature? Well, we are a growing state, and uh, we have many economic challenges. There isn't enough money to go around to provide all the, the services that the people in, in the state wish and uh, chief among which, of course, are all of the educational challenges and mm -hmm. certainly I want to support K-12 education and, and one of my goals too is for uh, uh, greater support for early childhood education in the state. And uh, that was one of my bills last year and will be another one, the same bill this year. It was vetoed to provide the opportunity for uh, citizens of school districts like Poudre School District to vote to raise their taxes somewhat to provide uh, a full day kindergarten rather mm -hmm. than just half day kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And of course representing the city of Fort Collins I'm eager to uh, increase our support for our universities because I think that's extremely important uh, for the future of our nation and, and the citizens of Colorado. And so uh, from early childhood education, K-12 education through universities is one of my uh, uh, advocacies within the state legislature. And we appreciate that. Tell us about your career in education and, um, and explain why you decided to become a teacher. Oh, explain why I decided to become a teacher. I became a teacher probably by accident. Uh, as a student, I was always fascinated by history and, and wanted to go to those places where many events in the past had occurred. Uh, and read about it, uh, but when I graduated from high school, like many other people in, in uh, my family as well as my acquaintances, I went to the factory and I worked in a refrigerator factory and for three months, two months it was, I put uh, three hinges on refrigerator doors, three screws in each hinge. And I knew that life had to hold more than that. So one day in July or early August, the counselor called from the high school and said, say, there is a teacher's college scholarship that the person ahead of you with the grade point average has rejected it. Would you like it? So I jumped at the chance, and so I was given a scholarship to Illinois State University, which was a teacher's college. And uh, so I pursued a, uh, a course in order to teach, and then I taught after that. What did you find most rewarding or fulfilling about the teaching career, Bob? Oh, as you well know, Bill, that uh, there is an utter delight in, in seeing the uh, aha on a student's face when they learn something, when they realize something uh, that they did not be, know before. And mm -hmm. uh, no, loving history as much as I did in order to see uh, people try to make connections and, and uh, like it as much as I did, it was a great joy. Uh, and so uh, teaching was, as you well know, is a joyful occupation and, and uh, to see students grow and learn and become excited about learning is, is one of the greatest uh, careers anyone could have. That it is. How are schools different today than, than they were when you taught? Yes, schools are greatly different today. Uh, when I taught, certainly early on when I taught, Everybody always sat in rows and rarely spoke unless they were spoken to. Now when we go into schools, we see students gr grouping together in small groups and discussing things among themselves. And there's a great deal more movement and, and activity in school than ever was in the past. And so there is a, a great uh, deal more involvement of students with other students and ideas and, and uh, talking about things than certainly it was true early on and certainly when I went to school. And it's much, much better nowadays. Were the clothes different back then? Oh, the clothes were much different. Uh, many of us uh, were embarrassed if we would wear uh, clothes with holes in them. And now when I walk into schools, I sometimes see people who uh, think that they are um, uh, dressing well if they have clothes that look like they're worn just a little bit, and sometimes with holes in them. And then, as uh, Emily mentioned earlier, that uh, yes, in the earlier days, girls wore uh, 
dresses and skirts, and uh, boys wore long pants, and rarely did you see shorts. As a school principal, Bob, accountability seems to be um, a large part of my job mm -hmm. and, and seeing that, that the kids are making the kind of progress that we want them to make. Have you seen some changes with that over the years in terms of what the state and, and uh, the nation is asking us to uh, account for? That's true. Uh, and nowadays we're, we're finding that both on the national level as well as the state level, um, requirements are put on school districts that used to not be on school districts from above. And Colorado is one of those local control states, and more and more I see the local control being uh, eroded. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really firmly believe that boards of education, talking to the constituents, the people in, in the school district probably have the, the best idea of what education they want. However, it is true that we are now in a global society and our students are far, have to be far more competitive with many more nations in the world and so we have to um, beef up our educational system more than it was in the past. But still, the United States, I think, has a marvelous educational system that provides opportunity for many people mm -hmm. that many other countries don't have. That uh, many students now come to school and can join the middle class and beyond um, and many other countries still don't afford those kinds of opportunities. How did you feel when you found out that Bacon Elementary was named after you? I was greatly humbled. Uh, it's a great honor to uh, have a school named for one <coughs> self and uh, to see my name on the school it, it, it sends a shiver down my spine. Uh, usually you think that uh, this only happens to people who have been long dead <laughs> and uh, it's uh, really a testament to Poudre School District that they name schools for those people who are still living and who have served in the community and uh, it's a great great honor and uh, I'm proud of the school and I'm proud of the students who go there. Do you get opportunities to visit Bacon Elementary? I have many opportunities to visit Bacon Elementary and before I was in the Senate I uh, came to read to the students in the library much more regularly than I do now. And I need to make time to do that more often. I love to visit Bacon Elementary. How did you become a senator in the Colorado State Legislature? I ran for the office and was elected, uh, which is a short way of saying that for six months I um, collected money and got money for my campaign and knocked on as many doors in the, the Senate District, the city of Fort Collins, as I possibly could and talked to the voters in order to become elected. And uh, it's a long, arduous process and it takes a lot of uh, effort, uh, but uh, there are so many issues that I want to advocate for that I uh, was dogged in my determination to represent the city. How long do you hope to be in the Colorado Senate? I know I'm going to be in the Colorado Senate for two more years. Uh, I'm elected to a four-year term and I'm permitted to run for one more term. We have term limits in Colorado and we can only serve in an office for a total of eight years, whether it's four terms in the House of Representatives or two terms in the Senate. Would you hope to do the second term? Why, certainly, if my uh, health permits and uh, things, the stars are aligned like that, I would like to continue to represent the city of Fort Collins in the Senate. Very good. I'd like to back up a little bit. I, one of these guys asked you about yourself earlier. <clears throat> what about Bob Bacon when he's not in the Senate? What, what other kind of, kinds of things do you like to do, Bob, uh, during the, the off-season? Well, I'm a... Uh, Zen gardener, that my garden is always in process. And uh, I like to dig in the dirt and uh, always have, and uh, it's one of the, the joys I have. And I think it's good therapy uh, because it allows me to think about other things and do something that's practical in the process. And rather than waiting for a tea time on the golf course, I can go out and <laughs> use a shovel and, and uh, deal with uh, weeds in the garden and move plants around and that sort of thing. And one of my uh, other uh, hobbies, of course, is uh, reading and uh, little known, perhaps I love whodunit novels. I like <laughs> mysteries and uh, am a fan of uh, several mystery writers and, and uh, 
love to escape through those, uh, those. And then being a, a former history teacher, I like to read both historical novels and, and biography. Just recently completed a biography of Jefferson and uh, it's uh, of great interest to me. So I'm a reader and a gardener. Plus, of course, the Senate business keeps me busy by going to many, many meetings and, and meeting with constituents and, and uh, going to many lunches and, and so forth. And so I don't want for things to do. Very good. And I, I guess another thing is I love to travel. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, the, the opportunity uh, affords itself. And I've been to Europe several times and, and really delight in uh, traveling abroad and have been to China. And uh, it's uh, a great joy to travel in the world and see other cultures. Very good. Well, once again, I, I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be with us today. We're very proud and we're honored to be affiliated with well, Bacon Elementary School. Well, likewise. I'm greatly honored that uh, you would ask me these questions and, and uh, involve me in, in uh, a program to deal with Bacon Elementary. And uh, teaching and, and living in the community has been a great joy. And I have enjoyed every career that I have had, uh, both teaching and uh, being a uh, legislator and being on the school board. Wonderful. Then thank you for all that service you've provided. Thank you to Tanner Euland and Emily Strasser for joining me this morning. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Tanner. Welcome. Mr. Smith, it's good to be here. Thanks.